This great big story is made possible by Lexus. Experience amazing. É uma adrenalina que sobe, uma ansiedade, um nervosismo. Parece que é sempre o primeiro jogo. Vai pro gol! O futebol de cinco, pra mim, é o combustível que eu encontrei pra continuar lutando. Meu nome é André de Souza Carlos. Tenho 40 anos. O meu problema de visão já vinha da infância. Eu tive um acidente e a visão foi ficando mais fraca cada vez. E um dia eu perdi ela totalmente. Eu jogo futebol de cinco já há quase quatro anos. É, é jogado por com quatro jogadores na linha, um goleiro. Temos que usar vendas para tirar qualquer vantagem de um jogador que tenha resíduo de visão. A bola tem um guizos para a gente se orientar por esse som. Depois que eu fiquei cego, perdi a vontade de, de ir para churrasco, encostei o instrumento e eu caí mesmo, eu caí lá no fundo do poço. Para mim foi um, foram seis meses de, de luto, de pensar em desistir, entregar a vida, e, e, né? que é ruim, foi bem ruim mesmo. E depois que eu comecei a jogar o futebol, começou a se transformar. Foram crescendo outros sentimentos de volta. Alegria, é, a disposição, o desejo de, de estar com as pessoas, de voltar para a sociedade, de trabalhar. A mente voltou a trabalhar, a ter outras expectativas, outros sonhos, outras novas metas. Fui adquirindo conquistas, tudo através do, do futebol. Smell. We know when it's good, and we know when it's bad. But there's a woman in Scotland, I'm uh, Joy Milne, who can smell the unsmellable. My nose went on fire. Joy Milne is the only known person who can smell Parkinson's disease. I have an extremely sensitive sense of smell. I can smell it mainly on the forehead and the back of the neck. To Joy, it has a greasy, musky odor. It is just a heavy smell to me. She first noticed it on her late husband, Les Milne, 12 years before he was diagnosed. I just thought he was tired and he wasn't showering enough. It wasn't very welcome, of course, me saying to him, well, you're smelling. It wasn't until she attended a conference with other Parkinson's patients that she realized the smell was something more. When I walked into the room, I thought, Gosh, these other people smell the same as Les does. At the end of the meeting, I stood up and said, why were they not investigating the smell of Parkinson's? No one was investigating because no one else could smell it. Researchers set up a controlled experiment to test Joy's nose. She was asked to distinguish a set of t-shirts worn by those with and without the disease. She insisted one of the subjects in the control group had the musky scent. The man rang about eight months later and said, I've got Parkinson's. So I had pre-diagnosed somebody. By the time most people are diagnosed, 80 to 90% of the damage is done. So Joy's mission is to help scientists improve early detection methods. If they can find these people earlier, it would stop this anguish. That would make such a difference. I started painting music just because I would try to explain synesthesia so many times. It never quite made as much sense to describe it verbally. So I thought it would be best just to
put it on canvas just because I've always been an artist and it made it much easier for people to be able to understand it. My name is Melissa McCracken and I am a synesthetic artist. Synesthesia is a neurological condition where your brain is basically cross-wired, so certain stimuli will come in and it'll create the wrong response in my brain. So for me, that's listening to music and it's translated into color in my head. I'm going to paint Superstition by Stevie Wonder. I love the song Superstition just because it's dynamic and funky and just fun and expressive. Whenever I start a piece, I have to listen to the song first to even know what kind of colors I'd like to use. There are some songs that I hate that I like the way that they look a little bit. Like a lot of pop music can, can be pink and purple and you know just all these fun bright colors, but the song's not that good. <laughs> so one or the other, I appreciate it somehow. <laughs> you know, you kind of really have to be in the right vibe to be able to paint. If you're not in the right vibe, you're not gonna make anything good. I think the prettiest genre of music is jazz music. I love blues and golds and whites and it just seems very pearly and iridescent a little bit. When I listened to Etta James at last, the thing that stuck out most to me was just her voice at the very beginning when she goes into the at last. At last. And it's just a very bright and but also warm sort of feeling, very kind of classic jazzy, which jazz music generally has a very gold and blue sort of look to it. Music has always been a, a very big part of my life. My older brother is very musical, and when I think back of him playing the guitar for me, I think of the colors of what those memories are. I was always a little disappointed because I was never very musically inclined. It was really cool to have a way to bring music into, you know, my life in a different sort of way. I describe it as having bubble gum, and once it's lost all its flavor, you have just a piece of rubber that you chew over and over again. That is essentially what food is like for me when I put food into my mouth. My name is Adrian Wellock, and I have lost my sense of taste. I suffered a, a cold and I started getting a metallic taste in my mouth. Once that finally left, took my sense of taste with it. It took me a few weeks to actually identify that it was my taste because I could smell perfectly. I only eat foods now which spend very little time in the mouth. Because I don't extract any flavour, the idea of a chocolate bar or a steak though, where you would chew it in order to bring out the juices and the flavours of it, there's no enjoyment from it. So I find myself eating very light foods like salads and rice. And also I use the advantage of, of adding herbs in order to make the smell sensation quite enjoyable. I also find the spice very important. Spice is not actually something you taste, it's something you feel. It gives us that sort of tingle in my mouth. You end up with a rather peculiar eating pattern that people look at you funny because you're putting chilies on your breakfast cereal and you've put in a, a mustard sauce on pretty much a lot of the food you eat. And almost three years now, we're still none of the wiser as to why it's gone or getting my sense of taste back. I cannot see, but I can hear the world around me. Meet Brian. He's known as the world's best totally blind mountain biker. When I was younger, I had functional vision and I played sports. I had dreams of becoming a professional athlete. And then suddenly, when he was 14, he completely lost his sight over the course of three months. His optic nerves inexplicably failed and all he could see was darkness. He wasn't able to bike ride or participate in the sports he once enjoyed. I couldn't play hockey. I had to stop rollerblading. Couldn't read the classroom board anymore. My world had shrunk. He had to find a new way to navigate the world. He found his cane limiting. But when he learned to make a tongue click, his world changed again for the better. And it wasn't long until he ventured back outdoors. 
I really missed bike riding and I really wanted to be active. I just didn't know how to do it. As a blind rider, it was a goal for me to get off the tandem and have the experience of being able to pilot my own bike. It all starts with a zip tie. A sighted person would attach it to their frame and angle it into the bike wheel. The bike wheel would make noise and a sound to follow while we would still actively click. Eventually, Brian was able to mountain bike alone and without the zip tie. When I'm riding my bike down a mountain, it's the same thing bats are using, echolocation. I can make my active sonar signal by making a tongue click. I start off with trying to find the object furthest in the distance and then piece the world together with things closer and closer. Brian has to enter an almost meditative state and remain extremely focused. Everything has to leave my brain and those sounds are painting a picture in my head, a vivid world of acoustic images. He didn't keep his passion to himself though. He's helped teach over thousands of people to hear their world a little bigger. This is a teachable thing. Anybody can do this and I'm happy to show them. Riding my bike was something I never thought I'd be able to do again. And now that I'm doing it, it serves as a great example to challenge preconceived ideas.